Hey all you Firebase developers, welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase. I'm your host, Jen Person, and today I'm going to be joined by Abe Haskins, and we're going to answer all your burning Firebase questions. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, Abe. Thanks. Um, what is it that you do here for Firebase? I'm a developer programs engineer on the Firebase team. Sweet. Uh, what's a developer programs engineer? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I guess we're done here. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it basically means I build open source things to help people use Firebase, help it, uh, people understand it better. So I write samples, write examples, documentation, things like that. Cool. So if anyone's checking out our code snippets or our samples, and yeah. if they go on GitHub and check out Firebase, uh, you probably had your hand in some of that. Yeah, absolutely. You can see me in Firebase projects way back for the past like five years. A lot of the ones that were abandoned many years ago <laughs> are projects that I worked on. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So are you ready to answer some Firebase questions? I could questions? not be more ready. Cool. So our first question comes to us from Twitter from Henry Learn to Rock. He says, what is the cost of listening to multiple Firestore queries in terms of memory and performance. So how many is too many, specifically on mobile browser? Sure. Well, the problem with this question is that there isn't really a solid answer. Uh, what you'll find is with Firestore, the same as with real-time database, and the same with really any database. It doesn't matter how many connections or how many listeners you have. It matters how much data are you processing on the client. So if you have 100 listeners listening to 100 bits of small data, that's going to be pretty cheap. But if each of those listeners is listening to a stream of constantly changing data, that's going to get really expensive for your client to deal with really quickly. And because mobile devices vary so much, it's really, really difficult to know how many is too many. So if you're targeting American users who tend to have really high-end phones, that's going to be a different limit than if you're targeting developing countries where their phones are much lower powered. So it really just depends on your app. As a general rule of thumb, though, more listeners, more connections are very cheap, and they're not something you have to worry about. So connections are cheap, data, not so much. Yeah, exactly. Got it. OK, I was going to say five, but I feel like that's <laughs> a much better answer. Yeah, if, I mean, right. five is a fine rule uh, of thumb, too. Yeah, <laughs> Let's hit the next question. Ooh, this is a, it's fun to try to read this. Twitter handle. Do you want to take a stab at that? As uh, Hari as Haru. Our buddy AZ. <laughs> Does Cloud Firestore support find by ID and update? No. Oh, there you so go. So Firestore basically has these operations that you can you can put together to make this find by ID and update. Um, depending on what exact database you're talking about, the implementation of that, that might mean a couple different things. But we have the ability for you to find something by its ID. You have the ability to update or do a merge set, which allows you to update over that uh, data without changing the data you didn't have a value for. Uh, so you have a bunch of options here. And you can get that same functionality. But it might not be just one method that you're looking for. Uh, it might be you know, a get and a set or a get and an update. Yeah, I think that one particular use case might be if you, let's say, you have a, a series of like objects and they're all under some sort of randomly generated ID. Mm -hmm. um, then when I cast that into whatever object I'm using, if I make it into like a restaurant or a person, I've started just getting in the habit of keeping track yeah. of what that key was because that makes it much easier to update. So if it's just inside the object, if it's like a POJO mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, add it to your struct or class in Swift, then it's really easy to just um, make that update because you'll already have the information you yeah, need. Yeah. And yeah, and this depends on what platform you're dealing with. If you're doing something in JavaScript, it's a lot easier to just kind of keep the raw data around. And then if you're dealing with TypeScript, you can cast it to the type that you expect, but keep the raw data around. And that, Or if you keep the snapshot around, that'll still have the key on it if you can you know, use that later to do updates. You have a lot of options. But yeah, if you're using auto-generated keys, you kind of got to write them down somewhere so you know what they are. Yeah, so maybe the answer isn't just no, it's that uh, there isn't that specific function, but there is that functionality. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, that was really fun. I'm so glad to have you on. I've been collecting questions for a while that I uh, didn't, you know, I knew I needed to bring someone else who might know a little more about it. So great to have you. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Always happy to talk about the future of the web and all the cool stuff we're working on. Future. The Ooh. future of the web. So thanks for watching. And remember, if you have any questions, post them on social media, Twitter, Facebook, put them on Stack Overflow, um, put them in a bottle and throw them out to sea. Can we get a P.O. box? 
Oh, that'd be so right? cool. Like some old school show. From yeah, the yeah. It'd be like, here's yeah. my P.O. box. Send oh. me a printout of your code. With the hashtag X Firebase yeah. in it, of course. Just tag us in there and we'll take a look. And who knows, maybe your question will also be on a future episode of Ask Firebase. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha